Hey guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be a sewing tutorial on this white jacket that I made. I whipped this up last night. I also made a matching set out of like a different material. So I, I initially made this out of this denim fabric that I had lying around in my house. But I, let me tell you, I thought this was going to be like the look of the century. Like there are even pants to match. But when I tried it on, I just looked in the mirror and realized I looked like I was about to clean up some kid's puke in the cafeteria lunchroom. So... I decided I'd do it in another color. I understand these videos are supposed to be informative and educational and it doesn't really matter the color material I'm using as long as you get the point, but like this channel is also my personal vanity project, so if I don't look good, then what even is the point? Anyway, I was digging through with other scraps of material I had lying around and I found this metallic white stuff and I like it much better in this color, so you know, we can call off the troops because crisis averted. So this is basically a little cropped jacket. It has a collar up here the zipper goes all the way so you can unzip it like that the main focus of this video and what i wanted to show you guys was how to make a big puff sleeve like this here's what it looks like from the back i feel like i'm like giving you bugs bunny like leading the orchestra like dum, bum, bum, bum. before we get started let me tell you everything you need for this as i told you earlier i made this out of like just fabric that i had lying around i'm gonna estimate that it's gonna take about a yard and a half to maybe two yards depends on how big you want your sleeves to be the next thing you're gonna need is elastic it should look like this you don't need to buy a huge roll of it i use like 24 inches on the waist seven or eight inches on the two wrists so let's say that's 40 inches total of elastic and then the last thing that you're gonna need is just a separating zipper to put down the front and then of course you're gonna want you know, your thread and scissors and machine. I bought new fabric scissors today, by the way, like they just came in the mail and I cut my thumb on them. They're so sharp that I was like testing them out and like me being the idiot I am was like running my fingers over them. Like, oh my God, these are so sharp. And then I cut myself, so. You think I would have learned my lesson from the time that I burned my arm on the iron checking if it was hot. Um, I'm convinced my last words are gonna be like, hmm, let, let me check if this rat poison is really poisonous. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna jump straight into the tutorial and I am gonna jump straight into the intensive care unit. This is gonna be a long tutorial, so I wanna apologize in advance, but I'm gonna leave timestamps in the description to help you compartmentalize things. First, let's tackle the sleeve. This is a big roll of brown paper from Staples that I use for all my patterns. And I'm gonna fold it and lay down a plain old sleeve from a plain old jacket in my closet. This is gonna be our starting point, okay? Lay down the longer edge of the sleeve on the fold of the paper and trace out the sleeve shape based on where you see the seams, okay? And there's this sort of S shape along your shoulder. If you have to eyeball it, it's fine, okay? No need to be exact here. When you cut out your piece and unfold it, you'll get yourself a shape that more or less resembles this, okay? Take a straight edge and split this into four equal parts by splitting it down the middle and splitting those sections down the middle. We're gonna cut them out and piece them back together like a puzzle, so if you number them, that's gonna help you keep track of what goes where. I'm laying down one more layer of paper underneath this and I'm gonna spread out my four panels. And the spread is what determines the shape of your puff sleeve. If you want it to be very puffy at the shoulders only, you're gonna really spread out the shoulders so the tops of these, but keep the corners touching where the wrists are so that the wrist is still fitted correctly, but the shoulder is really big. Alternatively, if you maybe want it really fitted at the shoulder and all the drama and puffing and volume to be at the wrists, then keep the corners at the top touching and really spread out the panels at the bottom where the wrists are, like that. I'm wanting a little bit of both, okay? I'm gonna spread out the shoulders way more and I'm only gonna spread out the wrists a little bit and it's gonna make this large fan shape. This is where you use your own creativity and vision and experiment with things, all right? Make a mock-up out of some other garbage fabric and see what it looks like. This is painter's tape that I'm gonna use to just hold these panels down while I trace around them. And you're gonna trace around them getting the rough shape. There is no precisely connecting the dots. You wanna make smooth lines. So just pretty roughly tracing around them. And when you take off the taped panels, what you end up with is a pattern for your new puffy sleeve, which is basically a fatter fanned out version of the original sleeve. Now, if you're like me, you want even more drama, Repeat the process again, split this into four sections, cut them out, and fan them out one more time. 
I had to get on the floor and connect the papers together to make a sheet big enough for this pattern. You can make your sleeves really extra and exaggerated this way. So this is my final sleeve pattern. For the sake of symmetry, I'm going to fold it back in half and try to shave off the bits that are making it asymmetrical because that's just due to my own error and how I roughly trace things out. And in fact, I'm going to cut the fabric on a fold to account for that error. So I cut out two sleeves on fold using that pattern and I'm going to fold them and pin it along the long edge and sew with a straight stitch. If you've sewn sleeves before, this is going to make more sense to you, right? Now that the sleeve is sewn into a tube, we have to do all of the gathering that's going to make this huge cut of fabric fit right into the shoulder seam. And I'm going to do it in this contrasting thread so you can see better. I've got black on top and red on the bottom in the bobbin. Because you know I got them red bottoms, honey. But like, not really. <laughs> you want to set your machine to do a straight stitch on the longest possible stitch length and set your tension down. Not all the way down, I have mine down to two where I normally stitch at four. And you're going to sew all the way around the edge of the sleeve, except for like the two inches around the seam where the armpit is, because we don't really need all that gathering around the armpit. And make sure not to do any reverse stitching to lock in your stitches at the beginning or end. In fact, you want to let a long string of thread hang loose. You don't even want to cut that short. Do it all again. Sew a second row of stitches parallel to the first one, like a half inch away. I kind of just line it up so that the first set of stitches falls right beside the edge of my sewing foot and that's kind of where I like to put my second line of stitches. So now we've got two parallel rows of stitches. On one end, tie together the two top threads, so that would be my two black threads. Make a knot out of them, cut off the excess, and the red threads on the bottom will just hang loose. On the other end, I'm tying together the two bottom threads. So I'm making a knot out of the red threads over here and letting the black threads hang loose. All of this is going to sound really weird, I know, but I promise there's a reason for it all. When you've made those knots, you're going to begin gathering. Start at whatever end you want, hold on to the two loose threads. Here I'm starting by holding on to the loose black threads and just grip onto the fabric with your other hand and tug on the threads and you'll instantly see it start gathering. And you're able to do this because it's long stitches on low tensions so that the threads are loose. And while I'm pulling on the loose black threads, on the other end, the black threads are tied in a knot, so it can never come undone. The fabric will just have no choice but to bunch up and gather, which is exactly what we want. I learned this technique from With Wendy here on YouTube, who I've, act I've actually met in person once, and she's so sweet. I think the reason for doing two parallel rows of stitches is because it's just stronger that way. If the thread breaks while you tug on it, there's nothing you can do but start over again. So having two rows of threads instead of one relieves that pressure. Keep pulling and kind of spread the gathers out through the whole edge of the sleeve. You only have to do about 50% of the gathering and then you can stop and do the same on the other side, where I'm going to pull on the loose red threads to gather it from that end and meet somewhere in the middle. So spread out the gathering. If you gather too much, you can loosen it up, reverse what you just did. But the goal is to evenly spread out the gathers until that huge hole has shrunk into the perfect size that will fit nicely into the sleeve hole of your jacket. And that, in a nutshell, is how you do gathers. An alternative method to give you that same shriveled up gathered look is to use an elastic band, which is what I'm going to do on the wrists, because the wrists have to stretch out to fit over my hands in order for me to wear them. This next bit, I'm going to show you the footage that I got with the blue denim version that I made with the contrasting colors because it's just easier to see. You're going to measure yourself a length of elastic that when it's in a circle, your hand can slip through it comfortably, but it's still a little bit snug. Sew that together with a simple straight stitch just down the width and you'll get this tab of elastic hanging off. Fold those ends down and sew them down with a zigzag stitch down the width and you'll get yourself a smooth circle. Now, this is the wrist hole of the fabric and this is the elastic that needs to fit inside. If we stretch the elastic, indeed it does match up with the fabric. So line up the seam of the wrists with the seam of the elastic and pin them together. Hold onto the point you just pinned and stretch it again. Where my other thumb was, I'm going to put a pin in that place too. 
hold these two ends and stretch the elastic again. Now I need a third thumb, but my teeth will do. I'm grabbing another anchor point where they meet and pin that in place. So all in all, I'm gonna get four anchor points, sort of dividing the circle into quarters and pinning together the fabric and the elastic and I can start sewing. Obviously the elastic is shorter than the fabric. That's the whole point, right? To compress the fabric down so it's all gathered up. So I need to stretch the entire length of the elastic in order to sew it to the fabric. And the pins are there to ensure that I'm spreading out the stretch evenly. So I'm now sewing on a zigzag stitch with length three and width four, something like that. By the way, once you're done with the gathers, set your tension back up to where it was normally. I'm splitting this into four sections defined by the four pins. Between each pin, I stretch out the elastic so it perfectly matches the length of the fabric. And you have to stretch the elastic the entire time that your needle is moving. That's the only way it's gonna work. It's a little bit cheeky because if you tug on your elastic too much while the needle is down, you risk messing up the machine because the feed dogs want to pull the material forward, but at the same time, you're stretching the elastic towards you. And you negotiate this by holding both ends, right? You have one hand in front of the needle and one hand behind it. It sounds very complicated. It sounds like I'm explaining the plot of fucking Avatar The Last Airbender. Like, these are the four sacred pins holding everything together. You're gonna think this is so complicated until you give it a try and you're like, oh, kind, this is actually so easy. You did not need to be so extra. But you guys, this is just how my crazy brain works and this is how I explain things to myself. And I'm a very dramatic person, as you can tell. <laughs> After you've sewn around the entire wrist, fold the elastic inwards once in towards the wrong side of the fabric and sew it again on the same zigzag stitch just to hide the raw edges. This should be much easier now that that first stitch is there, you don't need any pins anymore. After you do this to both sleeves, you're done with the sleeves and we can move on to the bodice. Back to my brown paper, I'm going to give you guys a really basic bodice pattern to work with. On one edge of your paper, you're gonna draw a line measuring 11 inches. From the two ends, draw two straight lines at a 90 degree angle going straight up. And those lines are gonna be eight inches long and 15 inches long. From the 15 inch line, I'm eyeballing myself a neck hole. It's about four inches long, just by using my hip curve ruler. From the neck hole, draw a shoulder seam about five inches long that's just subtly angling downwards and then I connect the five inch line to the eight inch line with my armhole. If you don't have a curved ruler like mine, just eyeball yourself a curved shape that looks something similar to what I just did. These are just my measurements. Use them if you think we're more or less the similar shape, but alter them to your needs, make it wider, make it taller, whatever. I'm gonna use this for the front and the back, so cut out two left pieces and two right pieces. If you fold your fabric and cut through two layers at once, you're gonna instantly get a left and right, so just do that twice. Take one of your pairs, put them right sides together, and sew a straight stitch down the line that was 15 inches long. And I'm using a 5 8 inch seam allowance, by the way, throughout all of this, and it's included in my pattern. So here's the back, and we're gonna pin the panels onto the front now. Again, right sides together always, and we're sewing along the shoulder seam and down the sides. Now this is our garment so far, and I'm measuring the entire length of the neck hole so that I can make ourselves a little collar. And I'm getting about 16 inches. So I'm taking whatever's left from my fabric and cutting out a rectangle that's 16 inches long and five inches wide. I'm gonna fold it, actually wrong sides together, so there's gonna be a visible raw edge on the inside, but at this point I'm not really bothered. <laughs> Sew it together. I won't use the 5 8 seam allowance here. It's more like half inch or as close as I can get to the edge and I'm gonna press this fold neatly and also press my seams open with an iron before moving on. So now you're gonna start pinning the collar on upside down so that the raw edge meets the edge of the neck hole and just pin around the entire neck hole and it should be the perfect length. And then just sew along the entire length of this, making sure that the stitch we use to sew the collar together is hidden inside the seam allowance. So sew this stitch just a little to the left of it. And when everything's said and done, you shouldn't see any messiness on the outside. 
Next step, we're going to add an elastic waistband to the bottom of the jacket. Measure out a length of elastic that fits snug around your torso or wherever the jacket is going to fall on you. To give you an idea, the real measurement around my ribs is like 30 inches, but I used 24 inches of elastic so that it's going to stretch and feel snug. With that being said, it shouldn't be too dramatic of a difference because when you unzip your jacket and open it up, you're going to look insane. Anyway, you're going to pin it to the bottom edge of the jacket to the wrong side of the material. Start by pinning both ends and then stretch it as much as you can and anchor it in the middle. I like to use my teeth. I don't want any judgment and I place a pin right there. And then I hold the middle and one of the ends and anchor the middle of that and pin it. Same exact notion as before when we sewed elastic onto the wrists, right? And you're going to just want to stitch on a zigzag stitch, stretching out the elastic between every single pin. And then once you're done, folding it inwards and sewing another zigzag stitch to hide the raw edge and hide the elastic. See how when I stretch it, you hardly see any gathering and you hardly see any wrinkling? That's how it should look when it goes under the needle. The wrinkling and gathering is what happens after it's stitched, but all the wrinkles should be smooth and stretched out by the elastic when it goes under the needle. And this is how the waistband should be looking after you're done. The next step is to attach the sleeves to the bodice. So flip your sleeves right side out and your bodice inside out and slip your sleeve in backwards, so from the inside, and line up the seam of the sleeves with the armpit seam of the bodice. This is always where I put my first pin. Now the brilliant thing about gathering with our method is that you can ease the gathering until the sleeve fits perfectly into the sleeve hole. So gather it more by pulling on the loose threads or loosen it up if it's too small until it fits just right and then pin and sew around the entire sleeve hole. When I'm done, you can still see some of those red and black contrasting thread colors. You can just seam rip those right out. We don't actually need those anymore now that the sleeve is attached to the body with a stronger stitch. All of those parallel rows of stitches were just temporary for gathering. The final step to this project is to add a zipper so we can close this thing. I went out and I got a zipper that was 40 centimeters long. It's a separating zipper and it's a little bit long just by a hair so I have to shorten it. So I'm cutting a little bit off the top by cutting between the metal zipper teeth. But now the issue here is that if you cut off the zipper stoppers at the top, you can just pull the zipper head right off. And then here's me struggling for a bit trying to get it back on. A real zipper stopper is made of plastic or metal or whatever material the rest of the zipper is made out of. And you can actually buy them and, you know, put them in with pliers and stuff. But I'm going to make a new stopper out of thread. To do this, you're going to set your machine to a zigzag stitch of a length of zero and the greatest width you've got. Because the greatest width you've got is happening to me. You're also going to want to find the little notch on your machine that controls the feed dogs, which is that little conveyor belt that moves your fabric forward. Disable those and they'll go right down. This all means that we're sewing a zigzag stitch but not moving at all. So the needle is just going to go from side to side stationary. Place your zipper in the middle of it and crank your hand wheel to do a few stitches and confirm to yourself that the needle is moving from side to side over the teeth without ever hitting them because the needle will break if it's slamming into the metal zipper teeth. And then just press on your foot and sew for like a good six seconds and you'll have made a new zipper stopper out of thread. Do the same to the other side and then you can use pliers to yank off the metal teeth that are above the zipper stopper since you don't need those teeth there anymore. And now you can zip up all the way without your zipper head flying off. Of course, the left side of the zipper matches up with the left side of the jacket. So align those and flip the zipper over. Crucial step and pin. Then use a the zipper foot to sew really close to the zipper and do the same on both sides. On the side where the zipper head lives, it's always tricky to sew past that. So I, I kind of sew the 80% of the length that doesn't have the head. Stop, move the head over and just sew the bit that I missed. And again, it's awkward with that huge bulky zipper stopper at the bottom, but just push it along, use the hand wheel. You won't be able to get super close to it, but try your best. After the zipper is sewn on, you have to top stitch it to hide this ugly fabric underneath. So just fold that edge inwards and sew it one more time next to the zipper teeth. And then finally, you're going to be done your jacket.
And there you have it, folks, a big puff sleeve jacket for the biggest puff of them all. I'm sorry you guys didn't get to see the pants version of this look. Um, the ones I made just were far too ugly to put onto my body. You just have to really, really exaggerate it, I feel like, or use a really fierce fabric because these just look like pajamas to me. Before I go, special shout out goes to these lovely people for tagging me in some of their recreations of my tutorials. If you guys end up giving this tutorial a try, please give me a tag. I would just love to see what you guys do with it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys so much. I hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!